I have a very important announcement to make at the end of this video, so please watch. Well, I think a lot of you have already seen this picture I have. It's a stop, an adjustable stop for cutting segments. When I do segment work, I need a way to cut them so they're exact. In the years past, I've used my fence on my table saw and just bumped it over. I really got pretty good at it, but this is absolute perfection. I have these little stops here that whatever I measure right here, I can trust it. it will come out when I cut it. I 3D printed these. I 3D printed those. We're not going to 3D print them today because not everyone has one. This is something I purchased. It comes with two when I bought it. Not very expensive, so I'm going to use the second one on the build that I'm going to do. I CNC cut this because I have a CNC mill. And the same thing with that slot. But we're not going to do that. We're going to do everything with the machines that you probably have if you're doing segmented turning. I don't know if I said, but it's eight and a half by five and a half. I wish I had some Baltic birch, but this is three quarter inch for plywood. It will work just fine. That's half inch Baltic birch. That's going to be the top sliding part. What I've done here is I've marked out like a, a little dado here. It's three quarters wide and it's five sixteenths deep. The rails that I make there will be made from Baltic birch, quarter inch. If you haven't done this before, to get the exact same thing on that side, I make one cut, turn it, make the other cut. I adjust the saw and when I get to this point, we have three quarter width. And the fact of it is, I don't make the rails first. I make the rails to fit whatever slot I have. I don't even have to get to three quarters there. So let's go ahead and cut those. You'll see how that works. And then I'll cut. Let's see, I need another groove. I'll need a groove in that and we'll do that. All right, let's go ahead and do this. All right, we got it. All right, I'm at the bandsaw, and that slot that I have to cut in here, you could use a router if you have a router table. I don't want to get mine down and set it up. I'm going to use my bandsaw, and this is similar to the way I did it on the table saw. I'm going to make a cut. I'm going to flip it. I'm going to go down to this line right here. That's how far I need to go. Once that's cut, we're going to put this back together so it doesn't spread. I'll glue a bar on there and it's not going to be in the way. I have it close. I'm going to make one cut, flip it over, measure it. I'm looking for a 5 16 channel because the bolt is one quarter inch. And that's nowhere close. So we'll uh, bump it a little bit. All right, that looks good. Make my first cut. I'm gonna go down and stop at that line. Make the next cut. And stop where that's at. Right there. Move the uh, fence back. I'm gonna cut that off. this. Get that out of the way. Cut this off. I'll just nibble this away. Alright, we have it. We go back over to the table saw and uh, we don't have too much more to do. Actually, the next thing I'm going to do 
is take where I cut that slot. I'm going to glue this piece of maple on there. Let it sit. I'll get the material out and we'll cut the little slide pieces. I've got a couple pieces of Baltic birch, quarter inch, a little oversized. And what I like to do is fine tune it with a scrap. I want to get it so it almost has some resistance there because if I sand a little bit and round corners, it, uh, it might end up too loose if I have it sliding in to begin with. Just take a little cut here. Check it. This goes in there, should be good. Let's go ahead and cut these. I got one uh, bandsaw side, I gotta make sure I put it the right direction. is just what I want for now. A little bit of hand sanding, make sure everything's cleaned up, no fuzzies on there. I'll cut the other one, I'll get those fitting perfect and we'll come back to, uh, well, almost ready to kind of assemble it. All right, we'll cut this one. just to show you how they fit. Should work. The next thing I'm going to do is take this piece over to the drill press. I have a center line on here and I've got a little mark right there. I'm going to drill a quarter inch hole in it. That will be for the clamp down mechanism. And then I will place these in here slightly shimmed above that surface. We'll set this on and glue it in place. I'll be right back. Okay, I've got the hole drilled here. It was actually needed to be 5 sixteenths. I've got these pieces shimmed up just a little above that surface. Put a little bit of glue on it. And uh, I'm just going to figure this is going to work. I'm not going to make it so I can take them off. I'll just put this on, line up this edge right here, just put some weight on it, <coughs> and you can tell my, <laughs> my throat's really acting up, sorry about that. Alright, I'm going to let that sit all night, I'm, I'm done, I'm beat. Well, I've got the miter slot hardware on there, and I squared it up to the sides. Put some CA on each corner so it wouldn't move when I put the screws in. You notice that I've got some orange looking inserts in here. I wanted a bracket that had a boss in it with a hole in there so I could screw it down because that's really necessary for this fixture. So I got around it by printing these and I have those in there. Once the screws are in it, it cannot twist. If you can buy these that already has a hole on the side, like in a little boss on there, that's what I would get. But this will work. As soon as I get these screws in here, we're going to make the last part of this, and that will be the little angle brackets that I put on there so that we can measure our segments. So I'll be back after I get some material out for that. Got the material now for the brackets that get fastened to the side. When they're touching, 
then that block that's on the front of this jig is up against the blade. As it opens, that pulls back and we measure that gap. That's how we get it. I'm going to go over and notch this out. I'm going to create a slot right here so that we have a little bit of adjustment in case we change that block out. We have to re-zero things. So I'll be back when that's cut out and when it's time to fasten them on to the jig. Before I attach these measuring brackets, I need to create a stop block so that the segments have a place to index to. So I've got a piece of maple here. I'm going to put it on a piece of sandpaper because as I move it back and forth, I don't want it dragging on the table. I'm going to run the sled up against that. Got a second piece of maple here. I'm going to glue this on. Let the glue sit for a while. Take it off, clean it up, put a couple screws in there to hold it in place. Now this is considered a replaceable item. If for some reason you want to create a different shape for something, you could do that. If this starts wearing out, you could just make a new one. Let's go ahead and get some glue on here. And we're just about finished. But I'll show you why I have to do this first before I put these on. Because this is going to zero out the sled to that block which is touching the blade. All right, I'm going to let this sit for maybe a half an hour. A little chilly out here. I'm going to go back inside, maybe have a cup of coffee. Or we'll see it pretty soon. It's time to go ahead and fasten the, this piece on. I'm going to pull it back out of the way so I can get a good angle on it. Put two screws in it. I'm going to leave it so it's adjustable both ways. And I'll come back and show you how I zero this stop right here. All right, we're just about there. The only thing left to do is put this in position and this is where the measuring takes place in between those two flat surfaces. I'll put this on here and I'm just going to fasten it down to the end of this lower section. We'll put it down into the slot. Like so, I'm going to put that up against the blade right there, tighten it down. This will go right here, I'm going to put a drop of glue on it, let it sit, I'll come back and put a screw in there, and then we can make our first cut. Alright, I'm going to test it. I set my calipers to 0.8885 kind of hard to see. I've adjusted that opening to the same thing. We're going to go ahead and cut a segment and see how close it is. Looks pretty darn close. Fits just inside of there perfectly. Alright, I think it's all set. I'll go ahead and cut 17 more of these and see if it makes the circle size that we were after. So when I set up my segment stop, it was just kind of a random opening that I did. I measured it and I cut that segment, I measured the segment. I set it to 0.8885 and this is called segment calculator 2. I use this a lot. It's on my phone, I just grab it. If I'm making a ring, I don't want to go back in and use uh, Woodturner Pro. So the closest I could get because of decimals is 889. That's 
a tenth of a thousandth away. That's close enough. What it said the radius would be is 2.5274. We're not counting those either. So here's the ring glued up and it measures 5.059. That's pretty close. So that's how accurate it can be. I want to show you one more thing and then I'm going to go in and show you all the dimensions and I'll do that on my computer and I'll probably have a drawing for each one of these parts. So what I've done because this clamp that fits in your miter slide groove there's a little slop just to get it in. You tighten that it goes tight. I don't think it's real important but I've squared it up and I use rare earth magnets. I put it against those magnets, light pressure, I bring it to where I want and clamp it. I don't know, I just like doing that. I know it's nice and square and it's not wiggling. But I think it would work either way. Okay, I'm going to go inside and uh, get the rest of this set up for you and that'll about wrap it up. I'm going to do the computer part of this right now. I've got drawings made, I'll show them to you. I have dimensions on them. I would suggest watch the whole video, go back, pause where you want dimensions, either write them down, make a sketch, do a screen capture, one way or another, it should be easy to get those, and this is very easy to build. So I'm going to start by just showing you what the boards look like with nothing much done to them. So this is 8 and 3 eighths by 5 and 5 eighths, and I drilled a 5 16 diameter hole and I went up 1 and 5 8 this is a 3 quarter inch thick board that's all you need to do right now I would do that stuff before I did anything else this is the top board alright same dimensions except this is 5 8 thick no reason for it to be any more than that and I do like using Baltic birch unfortunately I used up all the 3 quarters that I had what you do to this board is you make a 3 8 slot so that 5 16 bolt slides. I did that on the bandsaw. I showed you how I did that. I cut to like about 1 and 7 16 from the end here. And this is centered. Here's the dimensions to make sure it's centered, but pretty easy to do that part. All right, that's the boards. Now we get into the little more technical but still very easy parts to do. I guess I can show you the bottom sketch now. All right, here's the sketch. I cut these little slots in here on the table saw. You can do it any way you want. I made them three quarters inch wide. It doesn't have to be three quarters. You're going to make those rails afterwards to fit nice and snug without getting stuck. I went over a half inch. If you didn't get over a half inch, it's okay. It's, it's not real critical and that is three quarters thick. I definitely would use three quarters there. I cut the slots down there five sixteenths deep because I'm using quarter inch plywood which is this one. So this is the top. These are the quarter inch rails that I made to fit in the three quarter inch slots. Again if it isn't three quarters make these to fit. This is quarter inch you're going to end up shimming underneath them down here when you put this board on top of there you want it just enough so it makes contact and get them fastened on. Probably have done this a lot of times with other things. It's pretty easy to do and I really like Baltic birch like I said. I didn't have it for the base. It's very stable wood. Half inch thick. Same dimensions as the board that I showed you earlier because it is the same board. All right, I'll show you what it looks like as a solid model. Here's the bottom. Here's our little grooves, and you can see it's a solid model, like so. I've got a little part on here. Hold still there. Got a little groove in it for the screws right there. We're going to show you these parts, show you what you need to do to those. All right, that's the bottom. This is the top. 
I got this groove in here or a channel that I cut and I went ahead and just put a brace across there I, I don't remember what size it is. Let's say it's a half inch by half inch. That's that's all you need. I just don't want that spreading. Here's the other stop. This doesn't get put on until everything is zeroed. So that's what we have here. That's the top. So here's the part, quarter inch Baltic birch. We have the slot here. The screws go in there. It slides on those screws make that slot to fit the screw size you have. That's uh, dimensions here. And again, not real critical, but I made it an inch and five eighths tall, two and three quarters long, and I made that seven eighths of an inch. And I brought that little slot back to the end of here. And I did that on the bandsaw as well. This is seven eighths square. All right, now I need you to see the uh, stop block that the segments go against. So let me bring that up. So here's the dimensions I used. These are not real critical. Three and a half this way, two inches like that. And we have a 2.25 cut there. This sits on top of the jig we just made. And I want this myself to not touch the top of the table on your saw, but just be a little bit above. And I went with an inch and an eighth wide, which is plenty. And then I put two screws in there to hold it down to our little cutting fixture here, our stop block. So that's all there is to that. Uh, easy enough to do. I'm going to see if I can venture back out to the shop. So I'll see you out there. You're looking at the finished part and I'm not out in the shop. It was a week ago that I said I'm heading out to the shop to show you this. I wish I wouldn't have went out to the shop. I was moving my dust collector bin because I just emptied it. I couldn't see it, but it was a very small object I stepped on. My ankle twisted, then it folded. I came down to the ground and folded my my knee as well. And I just laid there in pain. And it's really, really painful, I promise you that. So I was able to crawl to the door and call my wife for help. Her and the grandkids kind of got me drug up onto the family room floor. I couldn't stand up so we called our youngest son who lives fairly close to us. He got me up, they got me to the hospital and uh, had x-rays, definitely showed a fracture in my bone that connects to my knee and they thought maybe a fracture in the ankle. Well I was able to see the surgeon yesterday and I do have the fracture in my knee because it shows up but there was none in the ankle what happened was I tore some ligaments which spread the bone at the ankle and that bone connects up to the knee bone and that has a fracture in it so that isn't as critical as the ankle the options I had were to put it in a cast and just let it heal and more than likely the knee would be okay but to make sure pins in the ankle were a better way to go and that's what I plan on doing. So tomorrow morning I'm having surgery. I need to finish this now so I can have it ready for this Friday and after that there will be no wood turnings for six weeks because I'm not going to be able to stand on this. But what I can do and I hope you'll watch this is maybe some videos on how to use Woodturner Pro, especially the 3D design uh, portion of it. And I can show you how to design a bowl. It doesn't have to be segmented, but it helps if you're struggling with designs. This is really a helpful thing. I find it helpful anyways. The other thing is I've kind of been playing around with different designs that I could use with uh, 3D printing for making parts for wood turning. So I can show you how simple it is to design something with Tinkercad, and I love doing this. I just hope you enjoy watching it because that's all I'm gonna be able to put out for about six weeks. I'm gonna update you once a week on Friday because I'm gonna have something out there, and uh, I know it's probably not gonna be exciting to a lot of people, but trust me, I'm gonna be back wood turning, so hang in there. 
because I want to keep making videos. So, uh, I guess I can say till the next time, I'll see you later.